Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Zev from Zed Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So today I have come down to see a good friend of mine, David Friars. If you've been watching my channel for some time, you would have seen David appear on some previous videos. If you're unfamiliar with David, David is renowned for making a custom handmade bushcraft modular pouch system. Now, if you haven't seen those videos that I previously recorded with David, I would highly recommend you go check those out. To make it easier for you, I'll link below in the description to the previous videos that we did. Now what we did in the previous videos, we looked at specific packs and then the modular power system that David fries and how it fits within that pack as, long as, the, uh, as well as the contents that are included within those pouches as well. So in this particular video, I've come down to see David fries in a beautiful woodland near Cambridge and what we're going to be doing is looking at a Helicon Tex backpack. So I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. Mr. David Fryers. How are we going? I'll tell you well, buddy. Good to see you, man. It's been some time, huh? And you too, mate. It's, been, it's good to see you and have a chat and catch up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the weather's behaving today, so all is good. So, David, we're going to get straight into this. So, what pack are we going to be looking at today? All right, so we've got the Helicon Tex Matilda pack, which is quite a popular pack at the moment. Um, and it's a good pack for the money. Lightweight ish good materials um, and not too expensive so i think it's a good all-round pack based on the sort of uh, alice pack and uh, works really well with the modular system excellent so i think where would you like to begin shall we look at the external side of the yeah, pack? yes have a look around the pack itself so comes in various colors and i'm not trying to promote helicon tech stuff you know i i just think that um you know i'm not I don't get any stuff by Helicon Tex. I actually bought this second hand. Um, but I think they're, for, the, for their, the cost of their products um, and the materials they use, um, I think they're good, good value for money. And uh, I was quite surprised with this pack, how comfortable and how well it, it fits within the modular system. The modular, modular system will work with most packs anyway, but um, yeah, this, this is a Helicon Tex pack. It's actually got quite a lightweight, I think it's a 500D couture material, um, but really well stitched. And if I turn it around, um, a basic but comfortable um, sort of suspension system. If you can tell, look, even the webbing, it's all sort of heavy duty, heavy quality. Um, products with D-rings on them, which is quite nice, quick release, which is a, a nice feature. Uh, so we've got some D-rings so you can hook stuff on. And on the sides, really cool. They give you, yet again, loads of webbing. I could undo that more and you can put a tent, whatnot, inside there and a bit of webbing. I've mentioned this before, a lot of people put pouches on the side here. To be honest, I don't. It's got three pouches on the front. There's a lot more other things I could put on these side pouches, like a tent, like a tarp, like a jacket, an axe, um, and it's on both sides. So they, uh, you know, they work really well. It's got a heavier thousand D type of Cador at the bottom and underneath, and actually on the waist strap, it's got uh, molly web in there as well. So if you did want to hang off a small pouch or whatnot, you can do. How many litres is this pack? To be honest, mate, I don't know, but I'm going to have a guess around about 40, 45 litres, I'm going to say. But I'm not totally sure, but that's what I'm thinking. Um, what else is to say? So, we've got the main bucket, and uh, we've got three external pouches, which are really good size. Um, so, let's just let's open these up and we can see what we've got inside them. So, on both the outside, um, pouches I normally keep water you want to try and keep that not weight even to both sides so both of these have got water inside them so got a small a little bandana and we've got one litre of water and on the other side we've got another litre of water and inside there I'll show that I have got a, a cup as well and a lid in there so you can uh, boil up water or whatnot with that. So that's two litres of water. But you can actually get one of these like Nalgene bottle, uh, Pathfinder bottle in there, and also a 500 ml Trangier bottle or similar sort of thing in there as well in one, in one pouch. So they are really big. Cinch them up. Um, yeah, really good. 
in the middle one. So there's your, the Trangia mess burner. That can actually fit inside of one of them with the ball water bottle. I'm using at the moment, which I think are really good, are these sort of plastic um, tent pegs. They're not a lot of money. And I find with metal alloy tent pegs, you put them in the ground, they always bend up. These, they're pretty tough. They do bend, they do go back into shape again. They're, just, they're very light as well. And they're, they're big enough to go deep enough into the ground on wind, when it's really windy, you know, so they're not gonna, just gonna pull out. Right, a little more classic which I've sort of custom myself. I've had this for years. I've had it for a long, long time, maybe 12, 13 years. And it's good, I'll use it as sort of a neck knife. Good for carving with and stuff. And the only other thing in here I've got is my um, stove. So this is the Bushcraft Essentials XL stove, the titanium version, which, um, yeah, I love it to be. It's a brilliant stove. And it's being titanium for the size of it. Yeah. It's really quite lightweight, and that's sort of a pouch I've made for it. So when it comes to the water bottles, quite simple, drawstring, and so there's like a 750ml cup with a barrel arm, Nalgene, one litre water bottle, and a cup at the bottom. Now some people say, why do you need to have a pouch for your water bottle? Well you don't. but especially if you're cooking and you're getting soot all over your cup, you don't want that all inside your pack. You don't even want it on your hands, do you, really? It's gonna happen, but you don't want it to. So it's a lot easier just to dump it, without even touching it, inside one of these, and cinch it up, and it's clean. Another feature to it, I always put a bit of webbing on there. And basically what you can do with that, just put a carabiner or something to it, put it to your waist, to your belt, and then you can just walk around with it, not worried about it. If you need to get into it, just open it up and just grab your water. So yes, you don't need it, but it can make life a little bit easier for you when you're out. Generally, I wouldn't have two, but because I'd always have like a clean water bottle where that's just a plain water bottle. Um, I'd have one that would go on the fire and the cup and this would be like a clean one so this could go anywhere really. And I think now is maybe a good opportunity to maybe even touch on the material since the last time we filmed. Yeah, so going back now, it must have been three years ago, it might have been three years ago we met up before. Um, I was using a different material, just trying to source a UK manufacturer of uh, a good quality, high quality nylon material is actually very hard. Um, but I did find one through the help of other manufacturers and companies out there who helped me. Um, so now I've, and I've had it now for two years, is um, this is a thousand D, uh, a Kodora nylon material and military spec. The company I get it from do supply to the, the military of manufacturers of so it's a good quality, lightweight as well, because the thing with nylon, where a lot of, you see the pouch out there are made of polyester. Um, the majority of them made of polyester. Um, not much is made from nylon. Um, just because it's expensive, I mean, it can be like 10 times the price of a polyester. But the beauty of it is that the, the strength of it is so much more stronger. I mean, it's a lot, lot stronger. You know, a little thread of it, it's, it's just hard to break. Plus, it's like weight-wise less than half the weight of a polyester, so you, you, you're getting an extremely strong but extremely lightweight material. And people say, "Well, having all these pouches in your, your bag is going to put two kilos of weight on on the bag." No, it doesn't, because if you even go through the pack, and I've mentioned it many times before, the modular system is a bare bones no nonsense design where it's meant to be as light as possible but to contain whatever you want to put inside it so that's the reasoning for it there's no tons of webbing on it there's no loads of buckles the buckles are there just they need to be there um, it's meant to be as light as possible and that's what this modular system is about right let's just get into the main So it has got a top lid and quite a good size one as well. Um, 
inside out. The little new product that I bought out is this pocket wallet. Really handy. Got a little sleeve inside there. People are using them as their wallets because uh, you can put your credit cards in there, your coins in the front there. Little tiny survival kit. Um, in many uses. I normally have in mind um, some business cards, some paper, a pen, a lighter, a small little knife, and it all fits in there quite nicely. My one I should have in my pocket here. Too many pockets. <laughs> and inside there, as I say, I've got some business cards, a bit of paper, a lighter, a knife, and a couple of pens. And if I was going out, I thought it'd be a little bit. Didn't want to take my wallet. I could just put some cash in there, and cards, and it's in your pocket quite nicely. Okay, it's got two drawstrings, which is really good as well. So you've got one that cinches up the internals, then that other one goes around the outside of it. So what we've got inside here? A little canvas sort of fire kit or tinder kit. I've been, as we see later on, I've been using uh, wax canvas and it's on the product line list now. And um, it, with the canvas, you can do other things that you can't do with the nylon material. Like these sort of drawstrings work really well with it. Um, so yeah, it's a little tinder bag. That's a cook that I made many, many years ago. Um, ground mat. So let's start off with the pouches. So in this one, we've got two X small uh, zip pouches, which are, all the zip pouches are designed to sit together to make sort of one square shape. And the beauty of the zip pouches is that they sit down really nicely. Once you open them up, you can just access your contents. So in here, I've got a brew kit, which has just got some tea, coffee and stuff like that. I always have to have a brew kit. And this is a small little, say possible uh, kit, where I've got some sharpening in there, a bit of fire lighting, um, some uh, fat bear, um, and a few other bits and pieces. So they sit in there quite nicely, and say so the zip pouches. This is the smallest one of the, of the three I make. There is a, uh, two sizes up, depending on what you want, but they all sort of designed on the same sort of principle. And yet again, the webbing on there is there for a purpose. Just makes it a little bit easier to open and, and, and close the pouches. Plus you can put a carabiner on there or hook it up. And they're good quality zippers as well, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, the I've never had an issue. I know they're not YKK zips, but I've been using these zips for the last two years and I've not had one break on me. They're size eight, so it's a size eight, it's a chunky zip. You know, I hate, one of the biggest issues you find with a lot of these products that they put flimsy like size four or five zips on or even six but this is a size eight zip so it's a, a beefy zip so it can take quite a lot and i put that size on all the products even down to the smallest one even to that pocket of what it has got that same size zip on it right next up this is the roll top i call it a food bag but it can be anything uh, but I, use, I call it that because I use it for food the majority of the time. And if we just lay it down now, you can see that basically it's a roll top bag. You put your one on it, you can fill it right up. And then as the food goes down, you just roll it down and close it. Nice handle on it, but you can use it for all sorts of things. Clothes, um, you know, tarps, you can put loads in there. And it's so, it, it, you know, it works really, really well. Billy Camp out. I do this in two versions. This is the buckle Velcro version, and I do it in a drawstring. And basically, like I design it for the 12 centimeter, the 14 centimeter, the Moore's pot. You know, most sort of Billy Cans will fit in them two sizes. I will be doing the like the 16 centimeter zebra zebra pot. Uh, just not got it up on the shop yet, but. You know, yet again, another feature, you know, you don't want to get soot all in your gear, on your hands and stuff like that. So you can see after using one of these a while inside there, they do get really sooted up. And they're tough, you know what I mean? They are really tough bags. 
And I think the buckles as well, yep. when it's kind of stored in the pack, it makes it easier to pull out in yep. and out, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just grab it, you know, all these things to just grab. So next up, uh, this is, we'll, uh, well, we're not will, uh, most majority of people like to, to eat when we're in the woods, don't we? And um, bacon is like one of my favorites. I like cooked bacon. Um, so frying pans for me is generally, I'll always have with me. Um, and this is just a pouch for that. Um, this is sort of a 20 centimeter, like the Pathfinder size pan. And uh, I've got like a titanium one now. It's got a Trangia, just a Trangia alloy plate that fits perfect inside there. The reason why I try and get a plate that fits similar diameter to the frying pan is because when cooking, it's nice to turn it that way up. So you get a bit of a steaming effect in there and it holds that heat in. Maybe something like sausages, um, you know, it would take a long time to cook. By doing that, eggs, great. You know, you can cook an egg and not steam the top of the egg. And I try and, most pans I've got, I try and add that in there. And yet again, same sort of principle. They roll up. And I'll make this in a, in a drawstring version as well, which is really nice in canvas. It does look really nice. All right, next up from that, we've got two of the long, large pouches. Now these designed to fit on top of the large pouch like that. And if, as you see, if we put it in there, they fit nicely on top like that. And you've got this nice flat surface where you can then work on putting all your other pouches in there. Um, and you sort of maximise all the space. So even that little gap there, by turning them around, I can fill that void nicely. And say with the frying pan pouch, you know, I normally like to put the frying pan down and slide it down the front of the pack or the back of the pack. Um, you know, it's a flat item. It can squeeze down there quite easily. So in here, um, I've got a, one of them is a tarp. Now you don't need to put a tarp in there. You can, you know, you can put everything, anything you want in there. I just put it in there because it fits quite nicely in the system and that pouch, that tarp fits in there really well. And this one, I've got a Gore-Tex Berghaus uh, jacket. We're coming up to winter time now. You want that waterproof layer. So like the principle of, of winter time camping from, or going out for the day is if the weather does change, I've got a waterproof layer, I've got the tarp if I want to sit under the tarp, and at the bottom I've got the large box pouch which has got a snug pack, it's a nice big warm snug pack jacket, so I can then put this on put the Gore-Tex jacket on, which is a, it's an XXL, so it covers all of it. Um, I'm covered, you know, I'll be nice and warm. And it's surprisingly how much you can get inside. People are always surprised how much you can put inside these, these bags. Um, you know, they're just, they, they compress everything down so nicely. You know, this, this even could take more inside it if I wanted to. You know, I can put more in there, there's still space. And as I say, they're designed to all fit together on top of each other to maximise that space in the rucksack. So basically that's a sort of, you know, my sort of bay pack set up. I haven't got a knife or a saw uh, in there um, because I've been using the Haversack type of bag which I've had them sort of core essentials, a phosphorus kit, a fire kit, a saw, um, a knife. Um, I know I've been using that, but that could quite easily fit in this pack with loads of space spare. And you could even do, all you'd need is a, ruck, um, a sleeping bag and a roll mat and you're there for the night then. So to kind of wrap up, uh, it's important to kind of reiterate a couple of things. Number one, 
obviously you've engineered the entire system to maximize the space in whatever pack yep. that you use. Yep. Um, secondly, as you kind of iterated earlier on, even though looking at the video, it may seem like, gosh, there's a lot of pouches, it adds on a lot of weight, it's actually quite the opposite yeah, because no. of the material that you use. To be honest, you know, uh, what, if you use the modular system like this, it actually will save you weight because instead of using maybe a 120 litre rucksack or 100 litre or an 80 litre, by maximising the rucksack, you can, uh, you can drop, I'd say, 20 litres. An example is I used to use an 80 litre rucksack I can get away with a 60 litre rucksack now because the kit's more organised. So, you know, there's different ways of camping. You know, we don't, we're not, we're not military people. You know, military people just ram everything in the bags. It needs to be quick access. We don't need that. We like to be. We've got time. We're out to enjoy ourselves. When we're out in the woods. You know, we got want to be organised and, uh, um, you know, and enjoy it. And being organised to me is, is makes my experience of going out more enjoyable. And one final thing, and this has been my personal experience incorporating your modular pouch system yeah. into my kit, is that because essentially all of your things are pre-packed, they're in kind of, you know, uh, their respective pouches, yeah. it also means if all of a sudden you decide you want to take a different bag or have a sack or pack, whatever, mm -hmm. it just means you need to grab the appropriate pouches and put it in. Yep. Very simple because everything's organised. You know, if you want that jacket for another patch, you know where it is, you just grab it. You know what I mean? And that's exactly the same when it's inside the system. When it's in the bag, you've organised it in a way that you know what's in there. And it's very easy to access. And there's nothing worse than at night trying to rummage around, trying to find that head torch or whatever it is, them earplugs or something like that. You know, you know it's there, you know like the possible patch will have them little items in there. You know that brew kit's in there, you know that fire kit's gonna have that stuff in there. And it just, it's just to me, it's a, it just, it was, you know, it's a no brainer really. Because the one thing I have found kind of relating to that is when it comes to packing up, for example, I packed up this morning to yeah. come down and see you, it makes it so much quicker. <laughs> it makes it so much oh, quicker. Oh God, yeah, I mean, you just, it's, even just chucking this in there, there's no time at all, you know, it's literally that. We put everything, we we know where stuff's going to go, so it's easy to, to, for it to all go in that exactly same spot where you had it originally. So that's like the main compartment done. We know... Go, you see? Simple as that. Done. Check it out, man. <laughs> Didn't have time to put the stopwatch on. You know, that quick. I think last, and this is also for me to see, is yeah. for you to actually put a pack on to see how it rides on your back. Would yeah, that be okay? Definitely. Yeah, no, it's always good to see a rucksack and being actual used. Because this is the first time for me seeing this pack as well, so... Not anything, just get it to the right level. So... There we go. Very comfortable. Sits nicely here. Now it looks really good. So David, people want to find out more about your pouches. Um, I'm going to put a link to your website, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, down below. If people have any questions in regards to 
um, specific pouches or kind of the system overall, would it be okay for people to contact you? Yeah, so you could just Google David Fryers and um, I've got the Etsy store. I'm trying to move away from the Etsy store. So we've just created this new website. Gives you a lot more information and a lot more clearer of the product. Um, so yeah, you can either get through the website, Instagram, and uh, YouTube, I suppose. But. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So what I'll do, guys, I'm going to put a link down below to David's website. I'm going to put a link below down to his Instagram. I'm also going to put a, down, uh, a link down below to his YouTube. Feel free to reach out on any of those platforms, hit him up. And David, I really do appreciate you taking the time to make this video. No, mate, it's been great fun. I always enjoy showing the products off. <laughs> Cheers for that, mate. So there you have it my friends, that is a wrap for this video. Really do appreciate you watching all the way through. As I just mentioned, I will put links down below to David's Instagram, his website, and his YouTube channel. Be sure to check those out. And like I said, uh, at the very beginning of this video, hopefully, if we have time today, we're gonna film one, maybe even two videos, looking at a couple of other systems that David has incorporated into his kit. If those videos are already out by the time you're watching this video, do check the links below, and you can go check those out and see kind of a bit more of an insight into what else he has going on and what I will also do is put links down below to the previous videos that we've done looking at some different pack packs and different variations of his modular pouch system so as always guys I really do appreciate you watching I hope whatever you do you have a blessed day a blessed week ahead for myself Zalatdoors and David Fryers peace out <music>